Hello everyone, welcome back to BNG Productions. I'm your man Parker, and today we're going to be talking about what the Boston Bruins need to do in free agency in order to become a cup contending team. So, of course, last week, if you remember, we talked about the trades, most specifically about guys like Linus Allmark and how his, and how his trade value could really bring in some serious players to sort of help the Bruins make it all the way to the cup this year. And today's video is going to focus on free agents and how we how the Bruins are able to sign players in order to get to the cup contending team we all know and love. So we'll hop right on into it today, taking a look at what the Bruins are looking at right now. We think about the team, where they're at. There's a big contract, of course, as you probably know. And if you're clicking on this video, you're probably asking, what are we going to do with this guy? Jeremy Swayman, of course, the RFA. We'll take a look first at the RFA between Swayman and Bofus. You know, 916 save percentage 2.53 goals against average 25 10 and 8 record in the regular season he was a guy that was just tremendous all season long for the Bruins and really helped them along into that cup contending role uh, especially this year when you look at this team it was supposed to be a transition year for them yet time after time the Bruins just seemed to outperform their expectations and in large part that was due to their goaltending we talked about the goaltending last week with Allmark what is he going to do you know, this week it's about Swayman. But how much is Swayman going to be signed for? For me, his valuation, I'm going to put him at eight by seven. So eight million by seven years. I think that's a pretty generous and fair offer. I think that's what you should expect. Uh, maybe you get the extra year. Who knows? But for me, in my opinion, eight by seven is a good deal for Swayman. You're locking down a franchise goaltender. And we look at it as well, you know, Allmark likely going to be on the move at some point, whether that be this year, whether that be next year when he walks in free agency. Going to be interesting to watch that one. And the other RFA I want to talk about is Jesper Bokvist. 14 points, 47 games played in this past season. But he's a guy that really plays with energy. And I like the way he looks on that fourth line. Probably will be the 13th forward for the Bruins this year. We'll get to those lines in just a second here. But now let's talk about the UFAs. And this is a really, really big one for the Bruins. Starting off here with Jake Dabrowski. He's a player I don't see the Bruins going and, and getting out and signing. You know, he's just a player that's been a little too streaky, especially when you look at his at his skill set and how he should be playing the game you're looking for him to be a lot more of a consistent player he just hasn't shown that quite yet it's very difficult to pay him the big bucks if he's not going to be able to be a consistent all-around player but at the same time he's still a very talented player we look at his this past playoff run 11 points in 13 games but yet every time you needed a big goal who did you look towards that was Jake DeBrusque number 74 coming down the side so we'll see if the Bruins go after him in free agency I think there's still room for him to go but from my opinion you're sort of looking in that five and a half six range and I'm going to put him over six years as well I think that's a pretty fair offer for both camps but I know DeBrusque's, DeBrusque's camp has been asking for more so we'll see if they're able to find that that medium at the end of the day I don't really see a world where Jake DeBrusque is a Boston Bruin next year but he might also be used in trade talks especially with teams like the Oilers who are very very interested in signing him might be an interesting one there we talked about a trade from last week involving Leon Dreisaitl that could be an interesting asset to use there as well another guy who I do actually see coming back is a guy like Danton Heinen 36 points 74 games played and a plus 16 on the year he was a guy that really took it to the next level this year. You know, he started as a PTO, built his way up, ended up playing on the second line alongside Zach and Pasternak. He's a guy I look, I wouldn't be surprised to see back in a Bruins uniform, but not quite in the role that you'd expect. We'll get to that in just a couple minutes. There's another guy is JVR, James Van Reensdyke, and he's another guy, you know, he could be a guy that the Bruins bring back, play that fourth line role. I've always been a big fan of JVR because he used to kill the Bruins as a Leaf and as some a Bruins fan from Toronto, you know, he was one of those guys that you hated playing against, but he loved when he was on your team. So for the for the Bruins, you know, he might be a good asset. We look at a guy like on the power play, it's not very often you get an absolute behemoth in front of the net with hands to play. That might be an interesting pickup for the Bruins to see if they go back another one-year deal. Uh, in my opinion, you're looking at a value of about one by one. For Heinen, it was two, 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 two million by two years. Reemstyke will be about $1 million for one year. In my opinion, that should be roughly where they're at. As well as Patrick Maroon, that's another one. The Bruins acquisition at the deadline this year. He's another guy. You know, Are you going to bring him back, play that fourth line role? Sort of that more physical style that you like to see from the Bruins. That might be an interesting pick up there. As well, this is where the defenseman comes in. We remember back to the sort of the Bruins overview. You know, they're at six defensemen right now. You know, they got the, they got the core of the six. And... We look at it, sure, that's great. You always want six defensemen. 
But what happens if one gets hurt, right? That becomes the problem. We look at the team like the Bruins, they need a little bit of depth. In my opinion, Shattenkirk might be that guy. One million by one year probably is what the contract you'll be looking at. In my opinion, that's pretty fair for both sides. I, you know, 24 points in 61 games this year. He's a minus two. But at the same time, he brings that veteran leadership. He's a calming pres presence on the bench. That's exactly what you're looking for out of a, a, a sort of that veteran style defenseman. In my opinion, he's a great pickup. And I wouldn't be surprised to see him back in a Bruins uniform next year. But of course, that one remains to be seen as well. And then we'll get into some of the guys I don't really expect to be back number one Matt Grizzlick and Grizzlick's one of those guys where just hasn't quite found his way but you know I think we both know that as soon as he goes somewhere else he's gonna just pick up his game and find it up find it and just unfortunately hasn't quite found it in Boston so for that reason in my opinion I don't see Grizzlick coming back fans don't give him that well of a time so at the end of the day in my opinion Grizzlick likely will be going uh, I'm not going to put a value on his contract because, to be honest, it really could be in any range, especially when he hits the free agent market. He has the tools of a top four defenseman. It's just a matter of if he can find his game, especially with his new team. So that one might be a little bit more risky for a, for a free agent team, but I don't see... I don't see the Bruins signing him before that. Another one is Derek Forbert, and we've already seen for, uh, numerous reports on him who will be testing free agency. So with that being said, not likely to return to the Bruins because there will be a, a bidder much higher than the Bruins will be willing to pay. And the last one here is Jason Magna. He's a guy, you know, hasn't played that much with Boston. I don't expect him to keep playing with Boston. I don't think the Bruins will offer him another contract, but who knows? There might be like a league minimum two-way deal. Could be an interesting one to watch there. So that's your current state of the Boston Bruins. And we'll look here now at the lines. We talked about it in last week's video. We'll talk about it here. What are the Bruins looking for? And that is, of course a top six center as well to fill up their top six especially on that right wing in my opinion those are the two spots that they're the most weak you know especially at that center role my opinion Zach is not a complete forward you know his centerman rather but of course when we look at it I know a lot of people weren't very happy he's a great face-off guy we were talking in the comments last week so be sure to let me know your thoughts if you still think I'm crazy about my Zach take but in my opinion he's a left winger he's not a center but let me know. If you're angry with me, put it in the comments and you can let me know there. But nonetheless, when we look at what the Bruins need, they need that top six center as well. In my opinion, they need to fill up that right winger spot. Right now, you know, they've sort of gone between a couple of them. They've gone with guys like Geeky. They've gone with guys like Jake DeBrusque. They've gone with guys like Heinen. It's just a matter of finding who it might be. And in my opinion, free agency might be the perfect spot to pick up that right winger, that top six right winger. And we'll get to who that might be in just a second as well. Move it down the list here to Bokefist. He's another guy, right, where he's an RFA right now. Good, solid fourth-line player. Is that who you want on the fourth line? Time will tell there. And the last one here with Swayman, of course, you're still waiting on his contract. It's going to be an expensive one. So when we look at it from that perspective, you know, how much are you willing to pay? Are you willing to trade Allmark? What might be a bussy right down the double in the AHL? Are you going to try and bring him up? That might be an interesting call there as well. You have $21.2 million in cap space, about that. Um, but at the end of the day, three contracts to sign, more or less. How are you going to go about doing that? Are you going to go, go out in free agency and pick up a big-time right winger? That one might be an interesting one as well. Now, let's take a look at the whole reason why you're at this video. Who are the Bruins thinking about taking? And we'll start here with the center role because I'm sure you all know it, especially from trade deadline. The first guy we have to talk about is Elias Lindholm. And he's a player that has been up and he's a player that has been down. We look at a guy like this. He's a streaky player. When he's hot, he's hot. When he's not hot, you can tell. And for the, guy, for the Vancouver Canucks, you know, he was very cold. And then he got hot in the playoffs. He looked really good. So when we look at a guy like Elias Lindholm, you know, 44 points, 74 games in the regular season. What is he going to do if the Bruins go out and sign him? But then at the same time, right, you do have a little bit of discount just because of the regular season. But there are a lot of suitors. And now it just comes down to how much are you willing to pay for him? You know, the Bruins were this close, right, to acquiring him at the trade deadline. Likely would have locked him up long term after that then just becomes the question. In my opinion, you're looking at probably what a six million by four year deal for a guy like Lindholm could be an interesting pick there. The second one I'm gonna talk about is Steven Stamkos. And you might be thinking, oh, you are crazy to assume that. But when we look at it, 
it doesn't seem that far off. Aside from maybe the Leafs, I think Stamkos is fairly likely to be a Bruin. That one might be a little bit of a hot take, but when you look at a team like the Bruins, Stamkos fills their biggest hole and addresses probably one of the biggest weaknesses of the team that caused them to not be able to make the Stanley Cup. Stamkos wants to win. In my opinion, that's a pretty straightforward answer to a one plus one solution. So with that being said, you know, 40 goals, 81 points, 79 games played in the regular season. When we look at a guy like Stamkos, he's exactly what you're looking for for the Boston Bruins. You know, he's able to score goals. That's been a big problem for the Bruins. You stick him alongside a line with, you know, Pasternak and Zaka. There you go. You got the playmaker with Zaka. You got the shooter with Pasternak. And you got the shooter with Stamkos. Then becomes the question of how are you going to run that line? What's going to be going on? What's your top six going to look like? But we'll get to that in just a second. In my opinion, his contract will be valued around six and a half million for two years. You know, he's getting, his age is getting up there. So we have, you have to keep that in mind when giving out contracts, but I think a two-year deal is more than enough to get Stamkos what he wants, but also keep the Bruins in range to what they're wanting. The third guy we're going to talk about is Wenberg, and he's a guy that I'm kind of interested in for the Bruins. You know, he's not necessarily your most high goal scoring player. He's not exactly your most defensive player, but he sort of fits a good sort of second line center role that the Bruins are looking for. And you'll get him at a little bit of a cheaper cost. My opinion, you're looking at about a four by four deal, 4 million for four years, you know, 30 points, 79 games played. What are you going to get out of him? You're going to get a second line center. I think he's a good pickup for the Bruins. If they wanted to go get him, you'll get him at a cheaper deal as well. That might be a good option for the Bruins to go after. But of course, time remains to be seen there. The next guy we're going to talk about is another Leaf with Max Domi. In my opinion, you're looking at about a $4 million by two-year deal. Now, this where this one might get a little interesting is the Leafs probably will go and try and sign a guy like Domi after they might even trade Marner, right? So when we look at it, Domi played really well for the Leafs all season. We look at it, 47 points, 80 games played. But really, when we look at the playoffs, that's where he really shown especially in that first round series against the Bruins. Between him, Bertuzzi, and Matthews, that line just looked electric. And when we look at what the, what, the, what the Bruins are looking for, that's exactly what it is, right? For Domi, you know, he's able to play the center role. He can play the wing. He's a, lot of, he's a guy a lot like Pavel Zaka, but he can play the full 200-foot game, and he's a physical threat. So when we look at it in that sense, I think Domi's a perfect addition to the Bruins. Four by two million, you'll get him at a cheaper deal. Shorter time period, but I think it's still a decent deal. The one problem, of course, is you got the hometown discount in with the Leafs, so we'll see if they can pry him from there. The next one here is a one that I've seen a lot of Bruins fans interested in. This is Chandler Stevenson. Three million by four years is what I'm going to go with. I've seen him as high as five and six. I don't know where these numbers are coming from personally. You know, he's 51 points, 75 games played. He's He's a good player right? He's not a scrub, but in my opinion, he just doesn't quite fit what the Bruins are looking for because they're looking for a top six, top two line center, top six forward group. My opinion, Chandler Stevenson isn't quite that. In my opinion, he's more of a left winger too. So, you know, right? That becomes the problem is how are you going to use Stevenson? What's going to go on there? At the end of the day, in my opinion, I just don't see how he fits in the Bruins scheme that well. Sure, he's a physical player. He puts points on the board when he needs to. But in my opinion, when we look at a team like the Bruins, what are they looking for most is the ability to score goals off the rush. In my opinion, Stevenson, you know, he's good, but you need a guy that can play a full 200-foot game and play that center role. In my opinion, he's just not quite that yet. So with that being said, I'm not a big fan of Stevenson. Let me know in the comments if you are. But we'll move it along here with Sean Monaghan. My opinion, five by four seems fairly right. You know, five million by four years. 59 points, 83 games played. Full 200-foot player. Exactly what you're looking for out of center. I like this move for the Bruins if they go after him. Sort of reminds me a little bit of Patrice Bergeron way back in the day. You know, he, he plays a full 200-foot game. He plays the game the right way. Exactly what you're looking for out of a center. But now, now that our centers are out of the way, let's talk about the left wing. And this is where it might get a little bit interesting because the truth is the Bruins don't really need a left wing. Zach will play the second line left wing role, especially if the Bruins can find a way to get a center. But just on the off chance they decide they want Zach at center, let's talk about the left wings. First guy is Jake Gensel. You know, he's going to be expensive. 67 points, 69 games played. 9 million, in my opinion, by seven years. It's going to be a tough sell, not to mention Carolina is likely going to put in a bid. So with that being said, it's going to be a tough sell for the Bruins to be able to get a guy like Gensel. 
as well. The second guy here I think will be a little bit more likely to go after and get is Adam Henrique from the Edmonton Oilers. Of course, they're still playing in the Stanley Cup Finals, but 51 points, 82 games played, two and a half million by one year. You know, he's a player that's getting up there in age. You don't know what he's getting. He's probably going to get one last payday. In my opinion, that's that two and a half million. He's had a good season. He's played decently in the playoffs. We'll see if he can keep it up. Third guy here is a little homage to home, if you want to call it that. Tyler Bertuzzi uh, from the Toronto Maple Leafs this year, Bruins last year, Red Wings the year before that. Tyler Bertuzzi, in my opinion, 5 million by four years is what you're looking at. 43 points, 80 games played, but he is one of those players that you hate to play against, but love to have him on your team. But he's just one of those players that was really cold with the Leafs, couldn't really find his game, and then the playoffs hit and looked like the Bertuzzi of old. That's the trick for the Bruins, to see if they can get him back into that Bruins shape. You know, we think about it that last season with news with the Bruins. If he can play anything like that, it might be an interesting one for them. And I would not be surprised to see them go after a guy like Tyler Bertuzzi, especially around $5 million. You know, you might put Saka on the center line. You put Bertuzzi on the left. You can even put him on the right. You, Bertuzzi will likely play anywhere. It's that versatility that you look for. I think, in my opinion, Bertuzzi is still a good option. I think it just will come down to price and if the Leafs go out and try and get him because he is a player that's trying to fit the new Leafs mold. And we look at it, they're, they're a team that's trying to get a little bit tougher. We'll see if they go and do that there. The last one here for the left wings is Jonathan Drouin, player that I don't see even hitting free agent market, but he is a good player if he finds a way through from Colorado. Five million by four years, he really turned it up a notch, especially in the playoffs and towards the end of the regular season. We'll see if he can continue his success in the upcoming year. 56 points. 79 games played in the regular season but he played a lot better than he did in the, in the playoffs and he did the regular season the next one here is the right wing and this is where I think there is definitely room for the Bruins to grow my opinion to Foley is the guy that you look towards five million two years in my opinion 55 points 79 games played could be an interesting option for the Bruins he's a full 200 foot player but he still has that goal scoring edge that you need especially on that wing side the next one is one of my favorite additions I think for the Bruins if they go out and try and get him and that's a guy like Patrick Kane you know he's been there he's done that everyone knows who he is four million by one year in my opinion is probably about right for him you know 47 points this year 50 games played but he was a guy that sort of was streaky once again but nonetheless you get a guy like Patrick Kane he has the goal scoring touch that you're looking for could be an interesting pick up there the next one and the last one that we're going to look at today is David Perron from the Detroit Red Wings as well. Three million by one year, I think is fairly right for him. You know, 47 points, 76 games played. Could be an interesting pickup for the Bruins, especially on that right side. I think he'd fill in probably the top line decently well. You know, you might even move Pasternak up to the top line, but then becomes a problem once again. You don't have that center, center role. And if you do, then you're missing the left side. Maybe that's a guy like Danton Heinen. Could be an interesting one to see how the Bruins go about doing that. But now let's talk about who I'm going to pick and who I think the free agent players that Boston should pick up. Starting with number one, we're going to go make it even less climatic, but it's going to be Kevin Shattenkirk, the first guy for the Bruins, 1 million by one year. I think he's a guy that you really look towards to have that seventh D role. You know, he can play on the power play if you need him to. He's able to play all sorts of facets of the game. He's an offensive player he's a defensive player he's sort of the full package of a 7th D that you're looking for and he's the veteran presence so I think when we look at Shattenkirk is a great player for the Bruins to pick up the next one is of course Jeremy Swayman you got to sign him he is a player that goes lights out for the Bruins and I think at the end of the day you have to sign him uh, I'm going to put him at 8 million by seven years I think that's a pretty fair valuation He's a guy that's definitely earned his money, especially in the in the late playoff run. And the next one here is Jesper Boakvist. He's the RFA, one million by one year, sort of that league minimum contract. I think that's a fair deal for the most part. I don't think he's going to play that much with the, in that fourth line if everything goes to play. And with this lineup, of course, we'll see what the Bruins do. But I think Boakvist is a guy you definitely want to keep around, especially if you're the Bruins. The next one here is Danton Heinen, two million by two years. I think that's another fair deal. You know, you're not going to go wrong with it. And, and he's going to play that sort of fourth line role on this lineup, could play as high as the second line uh, in any other lineup. Next, we're going to take a look at the new players coming in. There's two guys. First one is Patrick Kane. I think I sort of already touched on why, but when you get a guy that can score a lot of goals and he has the shot and the skill to do so, might be an interesting add there. Of course, there are some 
locker room problems, but it seems like every time a locker room problem guy comes into Boston, it just seems to get changed and the player excels. So we'll see if Kane can do the same. The next one is Steven Stamkos. You know, he's the exact player. And sorry, Kane was four by one. And of course, Steven Stamkos, six and a half by two years. He's a guy that you look towards each and every day. I think he's a great player, can really, really help a team to, like the Bruins to really take that next step you know he's been there he's done that he's won a cup in the last 10 years you know he's he's a player that you just want on your team especially if you're going to go on a deep playoff run and he's got the veteran presence he's got the goal scoring ability he plays a full 200 foot game he's exactly what you're looking for out of a first line center and you know you're getting him at six and a half by two you know probably you'll see that price go up a little bit they have a little bit of wiggle room with the cap I have it projected at about 1.4 million I think that's definitely a fair estimate. But when you look at this forward group here, you know, you have the top line, second line with Stamkos, Pashnak, Zach, and that could change. Really hard to tell right now. But you have all of your contracts signed. You're under the cap, which you have to be under. And, you know, when you look at what the lineup is missing right now, you got Brazo, you got Boakvist, who can play sort of that 13th forward. Shannon Kirk will be your seventh forward, or seventh defenseman, rather. And you still have Allmark holding a $5 million cap. You can do anything with that five million, even go out and trade and get someone even better. So with that being said, for the Bruins, I think this makes perfect sense, especially with the additions of Stamkos and Kane. Let me know down below. But it is question time, which means it's everyone's favorite time. We're going to answer some of your comments on our Twitter posts. If you have not already, be sure to follow us on Twitter at Black and Gold Pod as we do post daily questions for you guys to answer and appear in our videos for a shout out. So be sure to answer in there. We'll start here with James Rosano, who says, since next year has much better centers available, we can't obtain one of them in a trade. I go for Monaghan or Stevenson this year and add it to Foley or other 20 to 30 goal free agent wing, save some cap and sign star center next year. So with that being said, I think I see where the point's coming across, right? When we look at a guy like Stamkos, sure, it's going to be tough to get him. And I, I do think you can still get a pretty good forward out of that. But at the same time, the one thing I do want to draw attention to is, of course, the fact that the Bruins have quite a few good centers in the development program. So, you know, in that sense, they have room to grow. You look at a guy like Pat Patra, who, you know, in a couple of years' time, after the two years you're done with Stamkos, he might be a player that can really take his game to the next level. Could be an interesting signing there. The next one is from Logan Shandy, who says Lindholm, 8x7, DeBrusque, 5.5x6, and Swayman, 8x8. And I think this is one that it seems decently smart, too. You know, you get your center with Lindholm, you get the, the right winger spot with DeBrusque, 5.5. He's a guy that's played on the right wing quite a bit this year. He wouldn't surprise me. That would likely mean you wouldn't get Heinen back, which could be a decent loss for the Bruins. You know, he's he looked good for a lot of the year. Might be an interesting pick up there. And Swayman... I mean, you got to sign him at some point. Eight million seems pretty fair to me. You get him for the extra year, never a bad idea. DeBrusque, I think, you know, just comes back to the streaky part. If he can find his game, great. If he can't, that might be a tough one to try and convince. But nonetheless, we want the last comment here, who comes from Nick Knowles, who says, Daniel Sprong, four by three. Sean Monahan, four by six. And Mar Marco Scandella, one, or two and a half by one, rather. And Tivo Teravainen, six million by four years. This is once again, so so six million by four years for Monaghan, three million by four years for Sprong, two and a half for Scandella over one year, and Teravine and six million over four. This is a really, really tough, tough set of deals to make. The one thing I'll always say is less is more, especially when we look at a team like the Bruins. They don't have that much cap space, to be completely honest with you. You know, that six, 12, 15, 17 and a half, Plus the the contract for Swayman, all markets traded away. That's five million freed up. You're about that, and you already have centers available. So, with that in mind, it's a lot to take a, take in. But there is there is definitely a situation where you know a guy like Monahan comes available. Tara Vinen, I don't expect to hit free agency. To be completely honest with you, sure he's a good player, but I think Carolina is that's their first priority. You especially look at some of the trades and people that are looking at that it might get traded. Could be an interesting one there to really take note of. But with that, if you are new here, be sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. We are going to be live on Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time 
with our friends at the Black and Gold Podcast. It'll be right here live on the YouTube channel with our hosts, of course, Sam Smith, Mark Allred, and Dom Tiano. They will be going live at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's going to be a good one. You don't want to miss it, so be sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you never miss the live stream, especially when they go live. It's going to be a good one. If you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. If you'd like to drop a like, if you're really sure of subscribing, tell all your friends and comment down below your thoughts on the Boston Bruins free situation. Until next time, see you.